So the final topic uh, for today is joining IPs by what does it entail? And in this presentation, we want to address three different items. The first one is the R&D services that we uh, want to have. Secondly, uh, how we want to provide these services. And I will then uh, pre uh, present to you the concept of the central hub and national nodes and how this will be organized. And then finally, uh, we will end with uh, indicating how IBISBA wants to become a European Research Infrastructure Consortium, so a legal entity, and in the process towards achieving that, how you can uh, indicate your interest and already uh, become or show your interest through uh, signing a memorandum of understanding. So these are the final items uh, to discuss today. So first on the need to have R&D services, I think uh, you've already heard a bit about the type of services we want to, to, um, to make available to uh, the user community. And we can summarize or group them in four main fields. So on these are both computational and wet lab services at lab scale and at pilot scale. We have user digital services and also the digital, digital support uh, and yeah, all the management tools that we have around that. So I showed at the technology readiness uh, level range at the bottom of the slide, in just a minute I will take the pointer, that we cover, and this is maybe a bit unusual for S3 uh, infrastructures, the from this, the, the TRL level two, which is more basic principles and proofs of concepts, up to um, prototype developments that are validated in relevant or significant environments, so up to technology readiness level six. So we do include uh, pilot scale bioprocess development work as well in our service offer. So if we show it in a different way, we've heard about discovery and engineering of bioparts, strain development, process development, and upscaling. And then also enabling or supporting tools like omics and analytics, techno-economic assessments, and life cycle assessments. And of course, we want to, to serve also the various sectors that are linked to the circular bioeconomy that goes from bulk and fine chemistry, food and feed, up to uh, pharmaceutical ingredients. So a whole range of services to be covered and offered to a variety of uh, users. We've heard about service catalog that is available and in which we compile all the services that are in demand by our various clients and that have to meet certain research quality and data management criteria and we also address those. The services are modularized, we also heard how we are going to do that and that modularization is necessary to be able to organize them in multi-service workflows that meet then or that provide a bespoke solution for a request of uh, clients from a variety of backgrounds. Now what these services are and have to be is something that will evolve over time. So we have a first service catalog now, but we are also developing science and technology roadmaps. And these will of course not be static documents, but these will be uh, living documents that will evolve over time, where we try to capture uh, new developments and hot topics in science and technology that are relevant for the IBISBA mission and vision. And so we will continuously update those roadmaps and identify missing expertise from it. So if expertise is missing and we cannot offer particular services yet, we will look into uh, or look and try to find new partners that can cover that. These can become partners really of the IBISBA consortium or um, um, group, but it could also be that for some missing expertise, we will look for more loose collaborations with partners, maybe on a more temporary basis. So there is a variety of collaborations possible. So we have a set of services that we will define based on the, the research and science and technology ambitions that we have. But how and who will uh, then offer these, these services? Well, actually, we've heard that IBISBA is a distributed research infrastructure and that it will be organized with a central hub and interlinked national nodes. Maybe a first thing to, to highlight here, the central hub is not the IBISBA hub, but it's a concept that is used in this research infrastructure uh, terminology where we have more or less a central coordination team or entity that actually brings together and adds value to the individual capabilities of the various national nodes. The national nodes are then the uh, way to organize uh, the various facilities that will contribute and offer the services to IBISBA as a whole. 
And the whole system uh, or organizational structure will be supported then by cloud-based uh, information systems. So at the core of our structured community of national nodes, we will have a legal entity that will be EU IBISBA. And all the whole community that we have uh, with national nodes and our uh, centralized structure will share the vision and strategic agenda, common practices and policies. And then we will also group all the various science and technical contributions that come from the individual research facilities in the various national nodes. The national nodes are therefore the operational level. So these are the ones that will actually provide the technical and scientific services. The structure of such national nodes will differ for each country because each country has its own uh, requirements on how to set this up. In Belgium, for instance, it's even possible to have more than one national node in the country. And so there is a, a variety of, of rules uh, to check for your country individually. But the main aim is that the national node will group and structure the research infrastructures in that country in the fields that are relevant for the mission of IBISBA. And then that national node will provide the services and will build the research service capability, ensuring interoperability uh, with the other services that are offered by the other national nodes. So it groups research facility owners and of course the activities of the facility staff that are linked to it. The national nodes will also be responsible to interact with national and regional stakeholders and will therefore uh, come and link with hopefully a well-organized stakeholder community with it. And they will also prepare national investment plans because each national node will have its own facilities to maintain and upgrade and may occur also on a national roadmap for research infrastructures uh, and emphasizing and linking to national priorities that may differ between the different countries. And each national node can then of course also suggest new services uh, that could be proposed for which a user demand exists or is expected to exist and also uh, suggestions for further improvement on operation of IBISBA as a whole. So if we can present it in a more general way, we just covered the national nodes uh, that will do the facility management and upgrading and national coordination. And then you have the IBISPA central, uh, so the central hub, as I called it at the start, where we see more the linkage to the European and international uh, stakeholders and cooperation. Of course, business management and business development, brokerage for project support, and also supporting uh, digital tools coordination and uh, managing the collective expertise and assets that are available. Then we have the global user community, which consists of academia and industry and also government stakeholders. And at the core of that, we have, of course, uh, the cloud-based information system connecting everything and um, mobilizing or getting most value out of everything or all the assets that we have. The current status for the national nodes, some are uh, existing already, particularly in France and in Italy. In other countries, national nodes are emerging or being uh, built up. And when we look into the IBISBA Central, this is at present a more informal entity which does not have a legal status yet. But as mentioned already in previous presentations, the ambition is to move, of course, towards uh, a legal entity, but we're not there yet. So what are the steps? to take. IBISBA is an S3 project. Michael mentioned that already. It appeared on the roadmap of S3 in 2018. And according to S3 terminology, it is in the preparation phase. So S3 typically works with a life cycle approach where you go from a concept in stage one to the termination stage in phase six. We are now in the preparation phase and that comes with a number of uh, requirements, meaning that we have to look into data policies and management that we have to identify the most proper legal entity, that we have to uh, try and investigate how to, to secure financial and political support. So there is a number of preparatory actions to take, of course, to be able to move to the implementation phase where the legal entity will actually be uh, realized and the, the uh, research infrastructure will become operational. So where are we with IBISBA? So as mentioned before, we appeared on the roadmap in 2018. We have two ongoing Horizon 2020 projects, one finishing end of this month, the other one at the end of next year. And these have allowed us to take already the first steps in moving uh, forward in the preparation phase. So we have investigated uh, various options in terms of business models and legal entities that would be relevant. 
And at this moment, we are, we are at the phase that we are validating the business model and legal entity uh, to be able then to move and make things more concrete and move to the pre-implementation phase. So that is uh, expected in the coming years. So what is the current uh, preferred option for the IBISWA legal entity? It will be a European Research Infrastructure Consortium, a so-called ERIC, which is a legal forum that facil facilitates the establishment and operation of research infrastructures with European interest. And it's important here to note uh, that this will be on a non-economic basis or only with a limited uh, uh, number of economic activities involved. We can explain later on if that is uh, of interest to you. The advantages of going for the ERIC option is that there's a legal capacity that is recognized by all the EU countries and by the various member states and in the environment of S3 and research infrastructures this is well established and well known to all the member states uh, as well. And it's flexible enough to adapt also to specific requirements of different types of infrastructure. Important again, procedures to obtain a formal commitment of a member state to become, or a state of a country to become member will vary again from country to country. So that will have to be investigated also by the, the various contact persons or ambassadors of Ibizwa in the different countries on how this can be uh, formalized and such committed, commitment uh, may be uh, obtained. So, the legal entity does not exist yet at this moment. We are moving towards it. So what if you are interested at this moment and already want to become a member of IBISBA? Well, we have some options for that. And now I hand over to um, Mauro, who will shortly refer to the Memorandum of Understanding. Yes, uh, thank you, Helen. So um, while the uh, IBISBA partners are in the process of uh, creating a legal entity, they have uh, uh, signed and agreed upon a memorandum of understanding to uh, support the uh, operations of IBISBA. Um, not only uh, this includes basically the IBISBA central, but also uh, the IBISBA community at large. So the memorandum of understanding uh, fixes uh, some basic rules uh, um, has the purpose to cement the Ibisba community, but also to, uh, importantly, to extend the stakeholders community and secure support for Ibisba vision. Basically, the main elements of the Memorandum of Understanding are, of course, the moral commitments, which means they, the, the new um, entries have to share the same Ibisba vision and also have to um, be committed to, uh, for the sustainability of, uh, of Ibisba in the, in the long term. Um, the reason why um, the funding parties have uh, um, produced the Memorandum of Understanding is because they have realized that in spite of the um, funding that they, they receive, uh, they're still not sufficient to uh, to fully uh, operate the Ibisba in, and implement Ibisba in the future. Uh, so to have a, a fully flagged research infrastructure that um, goes beyond the status of a project. Um, so uh, these resources are defined in the, in the business model. So the funding parties are in the, also in the creation of uh, providing an innovative business model that clearly is going to clearly define uh, what the resources are going to be. This could be um, this could be uh, you know cash, in kind, human resources, and uh, and all sort of uh, contribution and funds from national or European level. So. Um, uh, in the future, in the future, when the the business model would be um, um, provided and established, all the um, a clear budget will be defined to for the uh, business operations. Uh, among the other main elements, uh, we have the bodies, which are represented by the general assembly, and we'll see later what the, what they actually uh, needed for and the sec secretary. Um, the memorandum of understanding is also um, a public. All the information that is shared in the memorandum of understanding is is public, 
And in case, in the case that some information needs to be shared confidentially, um, the the um, if it's shared between two or more parties, all the the parties involved have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. The memorandum of understanding uh, is valid at least until a legal entity is created. Created so this means until uh, Ibiza reaches um, the ERIC status, as we've seen, uh, as Ellen has mentioned before. So how can What's the procedure? How can you actually become um, a member? So this is done by accession, accession document. Uh, it means that uh, all the new parties have to uh, abide by the rules and they have to agree to all its terms. Uh, this is basically done by um, sending a formal requests to the secretary uh, in which the new party, the candidate, has to uh, clearly describe um, why they want to join. Uh, they, they show that they actually share the vision of Ibiza and also what is the contribution to, the, to Ibiza. Once the application has been sent, then the General Assembly um, has to validate and uh, it has 45 calendar days to take the decision, and once it is, the request has been as a, is approved, then the, um, the document has to be signed by the new party and the secretary. This has to happen in 30 days. To know the steps, uh, to have an idea, to follow the steps of how to become a member, uh, you know, you can uh, you can consult the Ibiza handbook is the handbook that NASA has uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, so as a first step, uh, it, mm, the new party can contact a national node or a national representative, which in case of the national node, this would be a director of a chairperson. And as also as Ellen mentioned, each national node has different procedures. So um, this, might, this will differ by um, each country. The, the membership does not also entail that the new member will also have its uh, services, facility services included in Ibis, but we'll see later why. The second step is, as been mentioned, um, is to sign the memorandum of understanding. And uh, the third step is to, um, it's a contribution to the uh, Ibis Papan European catalog. So as, as I said earlier, um, membership then not automatically um, entails the inclusion of the services. This is because as we've seen, uh, services are modularized. So it is really important to define the boundaries of each service. So this will have to be uh, carefully evaluated and uh, see if they eventually can be integrated in the as, as new service modules.